Welcome to the 394th episode of the Reading and Writing Podcast. Stay tuned for my interview with Natalie Lund, author of the new novel, The Sky Above Us. Stay tuned for the interview. The Reading and Writing Podcast is brought to you by Libro FM. Libro.fm lets you purchase audiobooks directly from your favorite local bookstore. You can pick from more than 185,000 audiobooks, including bestsellers and recommendations from booksellers. You'll get the same audiobooks at the same price as the largest audiobook company out there, but you'll be part of a different story, one that supports your local community and your local bookstore. If you're new to audiobooks, they're the perfect way to get more books into your busy life. You can listen during your commute, while doing chores, walking the dog, or just relaxing at home. All you need is a smartphone and the free Libro.fm app. If you already love audiobooks and don't know what to listen to next, check out recommendations and curated lists from people who know audiobooks best your local bookseller. Here's your special offer from the Reading and Writing Podcast. Get two audiobooks for the price of one today with your first month of membership with the code RWPODCAST at checkout. This offer is only valid for new members in Canada and the U.S. Check out Libro.fm today. Welcome back to the Reading and Writing Podcast. My guest today is Natalie Lund, author of the novel, The Sky Above Us. Natalie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Sure. If someone hasn't heard about your novel yet, how would you describe The Sky Above Us? Yeah, The Sky Above Us begins with three teenagers, Izzy, Janie, and Cass, They wake up on the beach the morning after a senior beach party, and there's a loud roar of a small plane flying overhead. The plane crashes into the ocean right before them, and the girls soon realize that Izzy's twin brother, Israel, Janie's best friend, Nate, and Cass's ex-boyfriend, Shane, were on board. And Izzy, who always knows when her brother is in pain, is sure that her brother is still alive, despite the bodies being pulled from the water. And the novel really takes off from there, alternating between timelines and points of view following the three girls as they try to find out what really happened and the three boys in the month leading up to the crash. And do you remember the original idea or impetus that led you to write The Sky Above Us? So I always start writing just by dropping myself into a scene. And this with the three teens waking up on the beach and the plane roaring overhead really just came to me. But I would say that the deeper themes of the novel really came out of a particularly difficult year that I had when I was a teenager, when there were the sudden deaths of four people in my life all within one week. And I struggled a lot with like whys and what ifs after that. And it took me a long time to understand that some questions will never be answered. And that understanding is ultimately what this novel is about. That's a lot of loss at that age. Yeah. Yeah. In one week. What was your writing journey that led you to writing and getting your first novel published? Um, I always wanted to be a writer. I majored in creative writing in college, and then I went on to be a teacher for a few years. I taught middle school English and, and then high school English. And during those years teaching, I decided that I wanted to pursue an MFA in creative writing. And I got together some stories and I submitted and, and then I started my MFA. And during that program, I was working on a collection of interconnected short stories that were all linked by this event a mysterious car that was found in the wake of a tornado. And as linked short stories, it just wasn't working. And it came to me at some point that I should probably try it as a novel. And so I just took a few of the characters from those stories, I think just three of the characters. uh, And then that same event, the, the tornado and the car that was found afterward. And then I wrote half of a novel in my third year of the program. I finished it in the year that followed. I spent some time editing and and then querying agents. And then I worked to revise it quite a bit with my agent. And then she sent it to my editor. And I'm now working on my third novel with that same editor. And what was your MFA experience like? Honestly, it was a great experience. I 
was really lucky in that I was in a class uh, with four female poets and four female fiction writers. And we just became a really close community. And I still talk every day to those women. And, and I think I like learned a lot from being in a community of writers. Uh, I also think just having a dedicated time to write, especially in my third year when I wasn't teaching as much was really important. And now I now I have a day job and I don't have that same amount of dedicated time. And it was really great to focus for three years just on writing and reading. You've written novels that are marketed as young adult novels. Was there something that drew you to writing young adult? When I was working on the first novel, We Speak in Storms, I asked my mentor after I'd turned in maybe a few chapters, I said, is this a YA novel? And he told me very quickly not to worry about it. He was like, just write the book that you want to write. And then the decision about how it will be marketed will be made by your agent and your editor. And, and you might make some revisions at that point. But like right now, just write this book. And so I did. For the ones who know safety isn't a catchphrase. It's a culture. And the ones who help make sure everyone makes it home safe. For the safety-minded who watch everyone's backs, Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry, as well as safety assessments and training to keep your facilities safe and your people safer. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Nissan believes you deserve a car that thrills you. So we have to ask, does your car thrill you? When you hit the pedal, do you get something back? A chill in your spine, goosebumps on your goosebumps. When you take off, do your fingers tighten around the steering wheel? Does your heart beat in your stomach and your breath catch in your chest? Does driving make you feel alive? Because it should. And if your car doesn't thrill you, ours will. This is the new Nissan. And then I think that I did spend some time when I was working with my agent on making it a little more why maybe more explicitly stating some things that characters are coming to the conclusions of or, or thinking than I would have for an adult audience. But I was just writing a book about teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that then once I had that first book, I, I wanted to keep writing about teenagers. And so that's where I came into YA. And do you draw on your teaching experiences in terms of your interactions with students when you're thinking about your characters? I would say I draw more on what I remember about being a teenager. <laughs> right. I I remember when I was a teenager feeling as though a lot of books that were written for teens did not really portray them as complex or as capable as I felt I was. And so I do remember having that like chip on my shoulder that I wanted to show that like teenagers were complex and could feel deeply and, and all of that. And I think YA has changed a lot over the course of my life. And I think that it does a way better job of this now. But I think that was something that I often thought about when I was writing that first book. And, and yeah, I think maybe there's a little bit from my teaching in there, especially about what teens look like and what they were wearing and how they were talking. But I really do think I drew more from my own teenagehood. Sure. What is your writing process when you're working on a novel? Do you outline or do you write more organically? What's that process my, like? Yeah. For my first two books, I was way more just flying by the seat of my pants. I always start with scenes and then characters come out of those scenes and then I figure out what the book might be about or what they might be trying to do. Usually I'll have a vague idea of where the book was going to end. For The Sky Above Us, I definitely knew how I wanted it to end. But the middle was just figuring it out. My third book was a little bit different because in order to get the contract, I actually had to write out an, a long summary for it. So I did have to think about it and plot it out before I started writing it, which was a very different experience. And I think maybe made the writing faster. Like I just felt like I could do it more quickly because I had that detailed summary. So who knows, maybe I'm a convert and in the next book. I'll, I'll <laughs> plot it all out. Did you did were you ever tempted to throw away that summary when you were in the in the middle of the book? Oh, I definitely threw away parts of it. I didn't stick to it perfectly. And yeah, but it really I do think helped to have a roadmap that I didn't have with my previous books. When you were working in your MFA and you were working on your first novel, were you reading much YA? I took a YA literature class at one point in graduate school. And I think that was honestly 
the first time that I'd read a fair amount of YA. But then once I started working on the book, I, I read a I read a lot. But I don't think that I had a huge a huge experience before that class with YA. Sure. What writing advice would you offer for those who are working on their own stories and novels? I think that passing on that advice that my mentor gave me about like writing the book you want to write and worrying more about the marketing and all of that later was really freeing. And so if I can free other writers, aspiring writers in the same way, I, I just want you to write the book that that you really feel isn't within you and then let that revising and editing ver- voice come in because I think that you need to be able to get it all out first. And are there ever days when you sit down to work and the words aren't coming? Oh, there are certainly hard days. I make myself write 500 words a day before work every single day. And then I do more on the weekends. I do 1500 a day on the weekends. And if I didn't set that goal and really make myself need it, I think that I would often just sit at my computer and do nothing for two hours before work. And so it really helps me to have a set goal and to push for it. And sometimes, yeah, I throw those words away, but at least I did it. And I like made myself think through something or work through something, even if the words aren't great. And what's your day job these days? Are you teaching? No, I actually work in communications for the physical sciences division at the University of Chicago. So after I taught for a while and then I went away to grad school, I came back and I started working in communications and then eventually landed into in this job. So I do a lot of daytime writing too. Yeah. It's just about <laughs> science. <laughs> yeah, a lot of science. <laughs> yep. So what fiction or nonfiction books have you read recently that you enjoyed? I just finished the audiobook Writers and Lovers by Lily King, and I really enjoyed it. I'm reading the YA fantasy Flamefall by Rosaria Munda, which is the sequel to the book Fireborn. And it's a fantastic YA series. Each book has such high stakes. Her her like plots make me jealous. The books are like political and thrilling and really well crafted. And so I've been enjoying that one. And are you working on a new novel now? I haven't started after. So my third novel, The Wolves Are Watching, is with my editor right now. And I haven't actually been working on anything in the meantime. I've been taking a writing break. So I <laughs> gave that to her a couple months ago. And, and I'll, I'm expecting it back for the next rounds of revision pretty soon. So where can people find you online if they want to learn more about you and your novels? Sure. NatalieLund.com is my website. And then I... NM Lund. Great. Again, we've been speaking with Natalie Lund, author of the new novel, The Sky Above Us. The novel is on sale now, so go buy a copy. And Natalie, thanks for doing this interview. Thanks so much for having me. It was a lot of fun. Nature makes the things we love. That's why Walmart and the Walmart Foundation are committed to help protect, manage, or restore at least 50 million acres of land and 1 million square miles of ocean by 2030. Nissan believes you deserve a car that thrills you. So we have to ask, does your car thrill you? When you hit the pedal, do you get something back? A chill in your spine, goosebumps on your goosebumps. When you take off, do your fingers tighten around the steering wheel? Does your heart beat in your stomach and your breath catch in your chest? Does driving make you feel alive? Because it should. And if your car doesn't thrill you, ours will. This is the new Nissan.